Hey there, this is Migs from Noobs in Cubes, and I'm here to talk about my hands on impressions of Dragon Ball Fighters during its close beta weekend. But first, a huge shout out to our friends from ungeek.ph for providing us with the beta code since the guys are in Tokyo right now, currently covering the Tokyo Game Show 2017. So what is Dragon Ball Fighters? Dragon Ball Fighters is an upcoming fighting game developed by Arc System Works who is known for their work in the Guilty Gear series and several other anime fighting games. A lot of people actually got excited ever since the announcement that the same devs who brought in fighting game fans Guilty Gear x -Surd, Persona Arena, Hokutonoken, and Blast Blue will be working on a proper Dragon Ball Z fighting game. Think about that. A proper Dragon Ball fighting game. If anyone deserves to take a shot at it, it's these guys from Arc System Works. So during the close beta weekend, we were treated with access to the game's current roster of 11 playable characters from the Dragon Ball universe. This includes Goku, Gohan, Vegeta, Trunks, Krillin, Piccolo, Cell, Frieza, Majin Buu, Androids 18 and 17, and Android 16. During the close beta weekend, the game gave us a good look at the arena lobby where you can queue up for matches or watch once a spectator, a replay mode where you can browse a number of replay matches from the devs, options on how to customize or edit your team, online avatars, and Z stamps, a set of emoji-like stickers you can use to communicate while in the arena lobby. So how is the game? Basically, Dragon Ball Fighters is a 3v3 tag fighting game similar to Marvel vs. Capcom 2 or Marvel vs. Capcom 3. The game's controls is also similar to Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Players are given 6 buttons to work with, 4 of which to use for attacking, while the other 2 is used for Z assists and Z changes. When it comes to attack buttons, players get the light attack, medium attack, heavy attack, and a special attack for performing key moves such as the infamous Kamehameha. The other two buttons are for your Z assist and Z change. Tap in an assist button and your teammate will appear and give you an assist while holding the assist button gives you a Z change which lets you swap characters. Pressing heavy and special or R2 lets you perform a super dash, which helps you close the gap between you and your opponent and initiate combos. Pressing light and medium at the same time or R1 lets you perform a dragon rush, the game's version of a throw. You'll notice that when a character performs a dragon rush, a faint circle will appear around them, letting you know that that's the window to tech a dragon rush. Pressing light and special attack at the same time will let your character perform a key charge. This basically fills up your super meter but will leave you open to attacks while doing this. Pressing back and special attack at the same time lets you perform a deflect. Similar to a parry, it can deflect key blasts, super dashes, and other certain special attacks. Performing a successful deflect on melee attack creates a space between you and your opponent and sometimes you can follow it up with a combo if you are near enough. Pressing medium and heavy attack lets you perform a vanish or a teleport attack. Now if you've played any Dragon Ball game or if you've watched the Dragon Ball anime, you're probably familiar with what vanish attacks do and in Dragon Ball Fighters, it's the same concept. Vanish attacks cost 1 bar of super meter and ideally you want to either save your vanish attacks for a combo extension or when you want to get out of corner or get out of a tight spot. Finally, pressing all 4 buttons lets you perform a sparking blast. Dragon Ball Fighters comeback mechanic similar to Marvel vs Capcom 3's X Factor. It gives you a slight boost in speed and power as well as restore your health. And that's about it. That's mostly what you need to know about the core mechanics of Dragon Ball Fighters. Even though the moves that I mentioned can be used by everyone, do note that every character in the game is surprisingly unique. Each has their own pros and cons, and all of them play very different from each other. Of course, you got your beginner-friendly characters such as Goku, which is all around, Vegeta, which is some sort of like a rushdown style character, and Gohan, which is mostly a melee-centric, short-range character. 
but some characters are so unique from the others that the game makes them worth learning. A good example is Piccolo, whose normal, special, or key attack is his extending arms that will pull you close to him instead of the standard key blast you see from most of the characters. Now pair this with his Sparter Circle Forward Plus special attack which is a homing key grenade that slowly approaches your enemy and you've got a lot of potential traps and setups you can utilize to further pressure and zone your opponents. Which leads me to my overall impression of the game. It is fast, frantic, but most of all, it is fun. I had way too much fun testing out each character and trying out which characters would make a good team. During the beta test, I've grown fond of my team composed of Vegeta, Android 16, and of course Krillin. Android 16 is, uh, yeah, he would totally be my favorite character from the beta test. Um, he's just, well, he's basically a grappler character, which is something that I actually um, personally love to use in a fighting game. But his, <laughs> his heavy attack is just dumb. It's dumb, it's powerful, it's basically a one-button gamut charge that can absorb hits, like armor, and it could lead up to a super dash into a combo, which leads to more options for him to actually play around with. He's a very solid character. A lot of people doesn't, don't know that his heavy attack is actually dangerous and his throws actually throw assists. So it's really it's it's really surprising and I'm having a lot of fun with him. So yeah, I guess that's my recommend. You you go play Android 16 when he comes out, you know? And as for online play, things are a bit janky when it comes to determining whether your upcoming opponent has a bad connection or not. Uh, most of the time we've been paired up with one to two bar players, but once the match starts, uh, the lag or the frame delay isn't that noticeable. So there are a few players we've encountered that force the game to have a delay of up to 10 to 20 frames, but after a few seconds it went back to a fair 48 frames of, you know, frame lag or frame delay. And yeah, speaking of frames, I appreciate the devs actually placed the frame delay counter on the top center of the UI to inform players what to expect, you know, during their online matches. So it's not just about the, the bars of the ping icon you have to look out for, it's actually also the frame counter once the matches start. So that's really neat, so it's something I really love about the game. And yeah, um, speaking again about the game, I've never played that much 3v3 tag fighters, but the mechanics thrown into this game made it such an enjoyable experience on every match you play. It might be the Dragon Ball Z fighting game that fans of the show have been waiting for. Of course, we have to wait for a few more months and find out whether the game will further exceed the fans' expectations. Lately, Bandai Namco and Arc System Works announced that Yamcha and Tenshin Han will make it into the game while also announcing a new character named Android 21. With solid gameplay that is both easy to get into yet rewarding to master, an ever-growing roster, a netcode that could further be improved, and a lot of fan support, Dragon Ball Fighters could be a worthy candidate as a day one purchase for me. I would also dare say it is worth the pre-order, thanks to the tempting bonus of adding Super Saiyan, Blue Goku, and Vegeta to the roster. But you know, by the end of the day, this is no doubt one fighting game to look out for once it's out. Thanks for watching the video, if you like what you see, give a like and subscribe. Also thank you again to the boys from Ungeek for giving me the chance to play the beta, and you know, do check out their content since they are now covering TGS 2017 Tokyo Game Show. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching again. Bye. Nothing to see here. Just a bunch of recommended videos that are stuck in this screen, as well as the logo of Ungeek. Probably a recommended playlist with the TGS 2017 videos inside of it. We won't know. We won't know until they publish it. I'm just I'm just here. I'm just I'm just the voice of reason. Anyways, bye bye.